In California, we have American black bears. Uh, grizzly bears were in California up until the early 1920s. They've been extirpated, and as a result, all the bears that we have today are American black bears. This bear, um, Fisher, actually came. We got him through the Department of Fish and Game. He was um, taught to raid a fish cleaning station by his mother. He is one of our larger bears, and actually a lot of the public assume he's a grizzly bear because he's so large. He is actually a lot smaller than a grizzly bear, and uh, his paws and the different toenail sizes, and also um, people automatically think he's a grizzly because of his color. So we talk to people about how black bears actually come in a wide range of colors. We have black bears that are reds, some that are brown, some that are deep dark black, and some that are even blonde in color. Uh, the size of bears varies also, female adult black bears can range upwards of 250 pounds, maybe 275 pounds, and adult males may be as big as 500 pounds in the wild. Uh, we've had a few, a few instances where uh, male black bears have exceeded 600 pounds in the wild. We know from data that we get from hunter-killed bears that bears in the wild live in excess of 30 years in California. The skull of a bear is different from other large mammals that you see, partly because of the size. It's one of the largest skulls that you're going to find of, um, of an animal in, in the woods. They're different from other large mammal skulls from the mountain lion, for example. The mountain lion has a short face. Uh, the bear has a longer nose, um, but not as long as you might see in the dog family with the coyote. Um, however, the coyote skull is significantly smaller than a bear skull. One of the most common characteristics to distinguish a bear skull from either the coyote or the lion is the shape of the molars, the shape of the teeth that are used for, uh, for chewing, for grinding. These molars have, um, it's called a bunodont shape, but the characteristics are very similar to those that we have. So uh, it's a little alarming to look at molars in this bear skull that look just like the teeth you brushed this morning uh, while they still have the large canines. Bear tracks are very distinguishable. They have five toes that, that they leave in the print and they're a large track. It's the only large track with five toe prints you're going to find, except for a large human. A large human could leave a print um, that might be about this wide. Bear tracks will be wider. They'll be shorter, but they'll be wider. Consequently, the only thing out there that leaves a track like that would be a bear. Bears prefer a wide variety of different kinds of habitat. They have a need for large trees, but the, the tree species could be variable. Um, so in, in areas where there's a high number of, of big trees with a variety of other kinds of habitat, that typically defines good bear habitat. Uh, the, the additional amount of brush and grass also provides for other food items for that bear as the annual cycle proceeds, so that they always have vegetation, and berries, and also places to den. The home range of a black bear depends upon the age and the sex of the bear. Adult males have the largest home ranges. It's the amount of area that they need in order to get all of the nutrition that they require. Adult females have smaller home ranges because their body sizes are smaller. Oftentimes youngsters that are, um, that are dispersing from the female will stay in and around where the female has her home range. The males will be less tolerated, the young males will be less tolerated by the aggressive dominant males, and as a result, young males get pushed more to the periphery. Oftentimes the problems that we, associate, that we see associated with black bears are these young males uh, being pushed around and looking for other places to be.
bears are classified as carnivores, but their food habits are more of what we call an omnivore. An omnivore means that they're capable of eating and, and will eat anything. Uh, bears and people have similar food habits. Uh, wild bears, oftentimes if they run across something that looks interesting, they'll consume it, uh, and if they get something out of it, that's fine. If they don't, then it just passes through. We feed them uh, a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. We do offer them meat, fish, chicken. Um, they're not huge meat eaters. The, they tend to like their um, veggies and fruit, and they love nuts. And we offer them high quality dog chow, and we also offer them grubs, uh, mealworms. And we will offer them roadkill deer occasionally, and they do enjoy that. Bears will eat mostly grasses and forbs when they first emerge from dens in the spring and they'll continue eating those grasses until their availability starts to dry up. And then they'll switch. They'll switch to what is available. They may switch and begin eating grubs that they'll break out of logs or stumps. And then as berries become ripe, they'll switch and start eating berries at, more, at a higher proportion. Once oak trees or pine trees start to lose cones or acorns, then that becomes an important part of the diet of the bear. So bears are very adaptable in their food habits, and it, and it will depend upon what's available as to what they actually consume. In the fall in particular, bears have a very high appetite. They're fattening up and getting ready, ready for a period of time where they are lethargic, where they do virtually nothing. The winter time they go through um, what we call kind of the winter sleep mode where they spend a lot more time sleeping um, and they, prior to that, they eat, they ingest a lot more food, they're more active and then uh, they go into their dormant season, so to speak. They don't hibernate here, it doesn't really get cold enough, but a lot of people think that bear, all bears hibernate and so they're surprised when they see them out during the winter. In Southern California, where food may be available and bears aren't denning immediately, they may even just slow down for a few weeks and take, take long naps during the day and not actually go into what we consider a denning behavior for bears. During the denning, bears do a variety of very interesting things from a physiological standpoint. Bears are able to use body fat as their main, for, main energy source and they actually recycle proteins because they're able to take some of the nitrogen out of the circulating urea in their blood and reuse that nitrogen to build amino acids. Consequently, they don't lose muscle tone during this process of time where they're lethargic. Bears have a very interesting reproduction. They breed in June. But at the time that eggs are fertilized, they only divide to um, a multiple cell stage called a blastocyst, at which point they are free floating in the uterus and they don't attach until much later. Long about November or so, depending upon the amount of fat that the sow has been able to put on, a variable number of blastocysts will actually implant in the uterus. Bear cubs vary in number anywhere from two to five, and they're actually born in the den in February and finish their last bit of development inside the den while suckling the female. When the sow emerges from the den with her cubs, they will stay with her for a matter of about 20 months and will learn to be a bear from their mom. During that time frame. The sow will not let other bears or very few things come between them, the, between the cubs and her. Even the dad, even the, the father of those cubs won't be allowed to get near them because male bears uh, have the history of eating cubs. They'll even eat their own cubs. So the sow will, will aggressively defend her cubs from other interferences. When bears are upset, they exhibit a variety of different kinds of behaviors. Many of these behaviors are intended to scare away the item that's making them upset. 
Um, bears will curl their lips, they'll pin their ears back, they'll drop their heads down low, uh, sometimes they stamp on the ground with their front paws, sometimes they lift up and then stamp with both paws on the ground. And then they even do a behavior called a bluff charge. If, you're, if you pose too much of a threat and you're not giving way to the bear, they may run at you full speed and then stop just feet short of where you are and in an attempt to scare you away. When a bear starts exhibiting behaviors like that, it's because the bear doesn't perceive that it has a way out. It feels cornered and it feels threatened. To successfully keep those things from occurring, the best thing to do is to slowly back up or to make sure that the bear has an escape route. Once the bear discovers the escape route, they oftentimes run away. For more information available to the public for how to avoid attracting bears or what to do if you have a bear, please contact keepmewild.org.